honoring your heritage, playing for the future is the adage of Mutual and Federal, who are the sponsors of the Mutual and Federal Premier Inter School Series. Good afternoon and welcome to the home of Paul Gymnasium here in Paul. And uh, the big match today is the local team up against Paul Ruas, who get an opportunity in two consecutive weeks to get some great coverage for their school. Well, it's a beautiful day here in Paul. Maybe a little warm for the players, but everyone's out in their shirt sleeves. There's no wind at all. And, uh, well, we know that these fields can become quite a quagmire in the middle of winter. So we are rather happy that we're here on a dry day. Paul Gymnasium founded in 1858. And uh, they started playing sport at the school in 1902 and introduced females into the school in 1964. So there they are, lots of young ladies will be supporting their heroes on the field. And of course, there's also many, many supporters for Polruis that have come through from Stellenbosch. One of our commentators today is an old boy, an alumni of uh, Paul Gymnasium. And of course, he, along with Bali Swat, played in that 1995 Rugby World Cup final when South Africa beat the All Blacks. So the cheering is just about to start and it's been a day full of sport too. Lots of rugby played at age group level and this is the culmination that will bring about this match with Paul Ruiz captained by Damien Willemser. One change from their team last week with Martin Lowe coming in for Cameron Dawson at Loosehead Prop. Look out for Daniel Steinman who was absolutely exceptional for Paul Ruiz last week. And Tion Kutsia will want to make sure that he gets a good service for his fly off and from his forwards because this team of Paul Gymnasium have a very solid pack of forwards, especially Adrian Ludic and uh, Sion de Toy, two aggressive players. And Zach Berger captains the side who have a real speedster in Muller Duplessis on the left wing. Look out too for Muller Ace, number eight. He's only just turned 17 and is the quickest in South Africa over 100 meters in his age group. So Zach Berger, you can see in picture there, a the little scrum off. We say little scrum off. These days you don't have too many small rugby players. But it'll be Paul Russell who will come out first. And Damien Willemsa, they're very, very skillful and organized fly half, will captain the side. This team has lost one game this season against Afrikaans Wurzian School at the St. John's Festival. And Paul, Paul Gymnasium also just lost one against Garsfontein, a very up-and-coming rugby school in the Pretoria area. So the big cheering is, of course, for the Paul Gymnasium players as they come out and are able to run through a wonderful tunnel there of uh, the young learners from this school. Captain Zach Berger today. And the teams look like they'll be playing from left to right as you look at your screen. Alongside me today, as always, Gareth Wright, former Rondebosch fly half at school level and, of course, many illustrious games for many provinces thereafter. Um, um, and Nathan Barry, our referee for today's match. His family hails from Caledon, which is a place where the likes of Colour Scholes and Errol Tobias come from. Great rugby playing area. They reside in Ravensmead these days and he's involved in food distribution in Epping so he's not fully professional but that's something that he would cherish in the future so the war cry there Gareth Wright of uh, Paul Gymnasium getting themselves ready and once again we have a game yeah that very few people perhaps could predict which way it goes Absolutely. Two contrasting styles will be on show this afternoon. The running game of Paul Ruiz against the more direct from Paul Gymnasium. Expect a, a tight affair up front for the opening 50 or so minutes. Whichever pack can get ascendancy, you'll reckon will prevail. Winners this afternoon. Perfect conditions. And of course, the fly-off duel between Theo Bosov and Damien Willemse is a mouth-watering clash. Self-same. Theo Bosov will kick off this match. Damien! And what a nice opportunity too for Nathan Captain. Barry, who's been refereeing since 2008, so he's not a fledgling on the block. And Bosov wants to get that first kick 100% right, and he's got it spot on. Not enough competition from his team. But uh, they have got Paul Ruiz 
back in their like 22. Now Siever, this Siever, is an interesting Siever. kick from Damien Willemser. Has decided not to kick it out, but it's a massive up and under. And some good work there from Muller Duplessis, who's played Western Province Sevens. The left winger, charge up from Adrian Ludic. Chris Willemser doing the hard yards from outside centre there to take the ball up. And it's Leave a it big down. battle here, forward against tra, tra, forward, tra. initially, as uh, both teams look to try and Los soften Siever. up their opposition. You heard from Gareth Wright talking about the inventiveness and the speed of the backs of Paul Ruiz. And the strength of this Paul Gymnasium side, who've just won a penalty. Good work in the opening minute by... The Khamisad keeping the ball through numerous phases. And there you see the value of their pack. Getting over the gain line, winning a penalty, an opportunity for Bosov to put them onto attack in that 22 meter area of Paul Rus. Line is in middle. Line is in middle. Donkey. Of course, these early exchanges are so important, Gareth. You often talk about, and we talk about tight phases and, of course, line outs and scrums, but you talk about kick ins too and how important those are. All three phases. Oh, critical if you are to prevail victorious and that's a wonderful start in the lineup by Paltham. Oh, very confident in going to the back of that first line out. Your first throw in as a hooker is not always that easy. Yeah. Often you'd like to go for the banker ball up front just to secure your position. Confident play by the home team. Also a confident carry up in this ball at the moment too. Well, there's a penalty advantage here. To Paul Gymnasium. And again, the perennial question. It's a kickable penalty, but it looks like they want to go for the line out. And good to, to see that from uh, Chamez. The mall started to function early on. They got the legs pumping, and from the side, Paul Rus transgressed. And another opportunity close to that Paul Rus try line. Daniel Steinman is uh, the opposition hooker today. You see, you could see a big tussle between him and Sean de Toy. Now he has another chance. Can they carry this up enough to get over the line? They lost their structure there, did uh, Paul Gymnasium. But they've still got an opportunity. They've got some big men here. Ludic is one of the carriers, but they haven't needed it because Zach Berger has slipped through the gap. Well, what a start for Paul Gymnasium. Zach Berger, the captain, has broken the shackles early on. From the mall that went to ground, no pillar defence, snapped around, and easy as you like over for the opening five pointer. Some poor defensive effort by the visitors, Paul Ross. But the home side and their coach and Peter Rousseau will be delighted with the way they've come out the blocks. It was almost like the Paul Ross. Defenders were looking at Ludic because he's the big boy to carry it up and Zach Berger then just saw that little opening. Well, the pillar defence wasn't in place and a gaping hole that was exploited by the captain and scrum off in the form of Berger. So Theo Bosov with uh, the first kick of the match. That's off the kicking tee, of course. That's a very neat kick from Bosov. Actually, right down into the road where all the cars are parked. But an excellent start this for the gymnasium boys. From the mall, they went to ground. Zach Berger, like a thief in the night, spotted the opening. And over he went for. The opening score. Damien Willems are also an important kick straight into the sun. So quite difficult for the Finnish players to field it, but Ludic did very well. So far the decision making in these early stages of Paul Jim has been exceptional. That's not a bad kick, but what a great take. Tian Kutsia. Quick pass out there from Andre de Toy. Leave it down, leave it! Well, 
that ball's gone and got lost there. And uh, Paul Gymnasium, rather Paul Ruiz will have a penalty. Yeah. That'll give them perhaps some measure of relief, Gareth, to get down deep into Paul Jim territory. I just need to settle down. They're losing the breakdown battle. They're getting hammered in the contact points are the visitors. An opportunity now for Josh Vermeer and to find sanctity in that touchline, and he's done so with a plump. Yeah, it's a super kick from him. South African school's fullback. Joshua from here and also a lovely player. Jesse Johnson took it into contact, getting driven back, but then it was at the breakdown, not being released by Sian de Toy, and the penalty went the way of Paul Rose. Very neat catch in the lineup from Johan Bauer for Paul Rose. Now they're looking to try and do just what we saw from Paul Jim in terms of the more we saw it against Gray High last week, too. Paul Rose. Did extremely well in this department. The biggest difficulty is often that you lose your structure as you go through, but they still rumble on. Side in, A little bit dusty down there in that far corner. It's like a, a herd of buffalo that have come charging down. Well, again, Gavin, both sides are battling to stem the mall. The sacking at the line hasn't been good. And that's given both sides the ascendancy when they're looking to drive it over from close quarters well it's a big day here in Paul this is one match but of course Paul boys high played against bishops too also here in Paul and once again it's Paul Ruiz looking to try and get that drive going get away too. Light it up, up against light it up. a big pack of forwards so it's not going to be easy for them Pizzia waiting for it Valimsa on to big Lyle Hendricks one of their try scorers last week Driven back, that's great defensive work from Gymnasium. Then Valimsa brought down by Mala Ace. Steinman. Leave it now, leave it! The leave tackling it. is very, very sure and secure at the moment from Paul Gymnasium. Lots of time here for Valimsa, not, not enough to look for a drop, but he just goes straight into the traffic. And it's a very, very busy midfield situation there. For Mielin up in the scrum half position. Good work here from Henri de Troy. Again, it's all about defence now for the home team. Well, the damn wall of Paul Ruiz broke fairly easily with Zach Berger's try. But Paul Ruiz are not finding it as easy. Lock on coming from Paul Ruiz, so great relief. And when you look around at your teammates, you just want to pat them on the back for the defensive work. And that's great energy that will be derived out of that defense from Khamis. They're looking to hold the tackle, the, the, the player up in the tackle situation. Choke tackling, they call it. And the double hits are coming in fast and furiously. So, Helmut Lehmann, who is in charge of the pack, and also the defense will be smiling from here to here while the opening exchanges have managed to keep Paul Ruiz at bay and now they'll be looking to exit out of there in goal area. Yeah, Helmut Lehmann, one of their coaches, Peter Rousseau, an old boy of this school, who didn't play in the first team, strangely enough, but of course played for the Springboks with great aplomb. We'll be interviewing him, or Corbus Visser will be, at halftime. And it's so useful having that trusty left boot, this time from Vian van Sail. That ball not going out, so this is where Paul Ruiz are really strong. They've got wonderful running backs. Just what Gareth Wright was talking about, holding the player up there. It was stay Dylan back, stay back, stay back. on that occasion. Back, back. Stay back. Difficulty here for Paul Ruiz is that they are not holding on to their position when they've got it. It's another big kick downfield from Vian van Sale. Josh from Yellen. Two educated fullbacks playing in this match two educated fly halves too stay back six stay back six, lots of important six. decision making for all of those players leave it now right good see got the call there to bring the ball out because there were numbers oh, no, on no, this near side and again they go the big boys this is Christian Leach and 
Good work there too from Jesse Johnson initially. Strong runner with the ball at uh, in the lock position. There's a knock on, so it's another turnover this in favour of Paddle Gymnasium. That's a great kick. Absolutely solid kick. So the hard work that Paul Wilson had put in to get into their half has been undone with that super kick there from Zach Berger. And again, it's the attacking breakdown that's causing headaches for Paul Russ. Been stripped of the ball. The cleaners aren't efficient. They're not getting the quick ball that they would have wanted. And of course, Hummies are playing the game in the right areas of the field. Oh, Polaris look at times like they really are getting themselves in motion and then all of a sudden, inexplicably, the ball pops out on the other side. Well, they've got a penalty advantage at the moment. Good see Willems a chip and chase. Which way does it bounce? Beautifully for the fullback, Bjorn Pitzel. And that could have been a very interesting finish, but referee Nathan Barry was playing advantage. Number five, second. Number five. Well, number illegal five, second, Raymond number five. Now being penalised for an illegal sack. And Paul Russ, again, have an opportunity to breathe, but they just can't seem to get any rhythm at the moment. And I'll be hoping Willemsa can get them deep into that Paul Jim territory. It's a massive kick downfield. That's a wonderful kick from the fly half. And you expect that of your fly half. And when he's the captain of your side, to leading by example. Let's go, Hicka. Just in the foreground of your picture, Raymond Nell with the late second, trying to pull it down, being penalized. So, a pretty good line out that from Paul Ruiz. Again, trying to get them all going. It's a titanic battle up front between these two packs of forwards. Big Martin Low coming in the last there. It's him with the ball right now. Brought into this team. Leave it down, leave it! Today he adds a bit of extra weight. No clear release. Well, it's another turnover, this time in penalty form no. for Paul Jim. And one gets the feeling, Gareth, that Paul Ruiz are really letting them off the hook. Paul Russo's carriage and contact has been woeful. They've been stripped of the ball every single time they're going to contact. A huge concern for Messrs. Jordan and his coaching staff. As Vian van Sale will look to bang it into touch. One of the useful things, too, with the Vian van Sale is at fullback today. He also plays in the fly half position. Quite often you find, I don't know how many games you played at fullback, Gareth, but it's uh, not a difficult change going 10 to 15. 15 to 10 sometimes a little bit trickier. Just there's a, you know, perhaps a lot more accuracy in the Paul Jim team, despite the fact that this penalty has been awarded. Number one obstruction. Now, decision time. If I was in the hot seat where Damien Willem says, I'll take the three on our fact. They've been battling in the early exchanges. And that's a wise decision by the pivot and captain. Are you saying that on the basis that it'll be good for Polaris to get some points on the board that could be mentally stimulating for them? Well, I've always been the advocate of taking the points on offer, build the innings and move in from there. They've already attempted the driving more early on. It hasn't proved fruitful. And now it's an opportunity for... The SA schools fly off in the form of Damien Willemser to open Paul Russ's account. Perfect battle, kicking come. conditions, no one to speak of. Well, that's not going to swing in enough. It's just missed very narrowly past that left hand upper. Interesting dynamic that we have. Paul, Paul Gymnasium get down there. They decide not to kick it goal and kick it out. They score from it. Paul Ruiz deciding, let's go for the three points. Yes, they haven't got it, but they still remain on the Wacht attack. Wacht Psychologically, Wacht that's Wacht a Wacht massive Wacht blow Wacht that the visitors struck early on. Theo Bosov has gone pretty deep. 
on to Vermeer and they want to keep their defensive lines intact Paul Gymnasium because this Paul Roos team are very good runners with the ball that's another great kick there Willemsa sums up so well he's just got such good vision on the field reading of the play was absolutely outstanding by the pivot saw the space in behind the right winger from Gimez and judged his kick to a nicety Well, they're not having any troubles in the line-out of Paul Gymnasium. Very secure with their throw-ins. Toy's done a really good job now. This kick down onto Aiden Lombard. Vermeulen calls for it early. He's a strong runner, this fella. He wants to come back in field. He does exactly the right thing. And then decides to try and pass with one hand. He did all the hard work to Josh Vermeulen and then not keeping two hands on the ball he had support runners charging down the middle of the field and unfortunately too nonchalant in his offload being slapped out of his hand great work by Vermeer and good feet good pace good strength shown change the angle of attack and then just at the critical moment botched his pass Paul Jim looked very metronomic in there. The way they approach the game, it's a no risk approach. They want to play rugby in the opposition half, build a chase line, and work it from there where their visitors show a little bit more enterprise and will try and run them around. However, it's a subdue and penetrate tactic from the home side at the moment. We've just seen some information there on the tight fives of both these teams and there's a reason for that too because that's where this foundation is really going to be laid for this match. Well, the tight head of Paul Ross. And Tristan Leach will have a battle royale with Andre Boyson. And at the moment, it's referee Barry who's on the near side, just having a watch of Martin Lowe up against Francois Staples. And just have a look at the angle of Martin Lowe. He felt the last scrum he was in on the angle. So last year's match between these two teams ended up in 23-21. Uh, just those two points. Victory by Paul Gymnasium. And over the years, in recent times, five encounters, the last five. Two won by Paul Rus, three by Paul Gymnasium. And for a long time, Paul Gymnasium was the number one school. So for a long time, they were the number one school in South Africa. That honor now belongs to Paul Boys. And at the moment, it's Paul Gymnasium, or rather Paul Rus, who are on number three in South Africa. Or in fact, number two, and Paul Gymnasium on number five. So this is a game between two top schools, rugby schools in South Africa. Vermeulen has a little look up, and then uh, that's another great kick. We've seen from the, the two South African schools players, Willemse and Vermeulen, are etching out territory for their team, but they're not able to follow through on that. Well, that was a poor exit by Vian van Sal. Kicked it down the middle of the field. He gave Vermeulen both sides of the field to work with. And another telling kick from the man in the number 15 jersey for Paul Roos. The line has functioned really well as Paul Jim in the opening 20 or so minutes. And the banker ball has been in the number 5 jumper in the form of Raymond Nell. He's reigned supreme in the aerial department. Oh, once again, it's another good line out. Two lock forwards, one catching and one running up, but now they've gone and given it away. And have, uh, Paul Gymnasium. With a sense of the try line beckoning, it's Paul Ruiz full charge in the 22. They're absolutely desperate. Martin Lowe on this occasion wins a couple of valuable meters. Now, Lyle Hendricks. Absolutely no way through. The defense has been exceptional. We spoke about their line out work, Paul Jim, but certainly their defense has worked. But now suddenly it changes. First tackle missed there on Henri Detoy. Quick delivery from the breakdown point is not forthcoming. 
Los down, los, los down, los. That ball being held up at the moment. Leave it. Now, can they find a way through here? Quick passing. Johnson comes back. It's a lovely little offload from him. And Bruce Kutsia has got in. Well, they've had to work really hard for that try. Paul Ross have hit back via their number eight and talisman, Bruce Kutsia, after a telling break from the open side flanker in Detroit. It was Kutsia who rounded off the movement, working the ball through the hands into space, and the presence of mind to work in contact did Kutsia have, and he has brought Paul Ross the score that they would have been looking for. It was a delightful little run around there, wasn't it? It just shows you how important it is to stay with the ball. And Bruce could see as that sort of player. On his first kick, he pulled it to the left somewhat. Due to that non-kicking shoulder going out, he'll need to rectify that if he's to add the extras. Well, this time he's managed to steer it through. As Willem says, uh, the teams are level. Was off to the initial line break. Paul Jim were too tight around the ruck, and then the offload in contact by Johnson. He sucked in two defenders, and Miller Ace was too late. And the attentions that were applied to the number eight in the form of Kutsia were not enough. Once again, a lovely kick in there from Theo Bosov, which went to ground. There was a chase there from Jan Jordan on the right wing and Aiden Lombard on the left wing for Paul Ruiz. <laughs> now Jesse Johnson often does that. He catches and then starts running from the line out, finds space through. Could see his kick downfield. That's a pretty good kick. Doesn't get the bounce he would have wanted, but I tell you what, Vian van Sal, this is not an easy situation for him. He tries to run out, but he's run into a lot of trouble there. Now that ball's on the deck. Yeah, it shows the ball. So pull it back in, playing the ball on the ground. Of a good kick into space. And a fantastic kick chase. Good work by Paul Russ. Vian van Sal decided to have a run from the back, the wrong option. And he's caused his side some strife as they now find themselves oh. in a defensive position oh. as Paul Ruiz will look to execute a more from five meters or so out. Well, the procedure struggling a little bit, seems like, with an arm injury. But it's all hands on deck now in defensive terms. Get away, Paul! Paul Get away, Paul! Leave it. So the long pass. Out to Philip van Dijk. Well, I'll tell you what, Paul Jim is certainly making a lot more tackles than Paul Ruiz in this match. The grand yeoman work in defence by the home side. But this defence will be energy sapping for the men in yellow, green and maroon. You see the tackles made, 33 by the home side to the 18 from Paul Ruiz. Bind. And the missed Six. tackles, well, Steady. a big Steady. concern. Seven Steady. missed to the solitary one from their visitors. But that, that doesn't seem to be that visible, does it? That particular statistic, I think they've defended yeah, pretty well. But that's any type of tackle anywhere on the field, of course. So they maybe haven't made a massive difference. So for Mielin and Willemse in tandem. Ball gets left behind by Willemsa. Could see her trying to come back, and eventually it's the flying boot of David Lee Moses that gets the ball into touch. But again, Paul Ruiz making their life difficult. Oh, Gavin, they're carrying the ball in one hand. They need to work with the ball in two hands. And yet again, the ball is dropped. Possession stat in favor of Paul Ruiz. However, pretty similar from a territory perspective. But it's Paul Gymnasium who are on attack. Inside that, Paul Ruiz, 22. Oh, 
control blast there Fahiras. of the referee for Nappers in the lineout. So, again, both teams have very yep. accomplished right and left footed kickers, which is great for your option taking on the field. So, this will be the left footer for Mielen on that Flores side Christoph. of the field, and Willem yeah, side. Two two the so same with Vian van Sael yep. and Theo Bossov. And it can be a nightmare for a back three as you can manipulate the, sp the space with a right and left footer. As Vermeil and gives it a solid whack down the grandstand touchline. That's a great kick. Back into their half goal. Ball gymnasium. Yes, 100%. The ball, the ball must five to take. Need to pursue and not five star. 100%. In fact, I was incorrect. That ball didn't go five meters from the throw in at the line out. It wasn't about numbers. You just heard that from the referee. Under toy, he's throwing in as being exceptional today. The take by Mala Ace at the back, and they rumble downfield into the opposition half. Well, they made a good 20 meters probably at this yeah, point in time. Up, up. Leave it out, seven. You're off seven. You're off seven. Zach Berger. Back she goes. The left boot of Vian van Sail. Well, the left boot is not called into play. As they continue to hold the ball and carry it up. Again, trying to get their forwards in motion. Such a good pack of forwards that Paul Jim have. First chance here for Vian van Nikak. Done well. Got through the first tackle. Can he sidestep? Has he got the power? This time, great defensive work. Initially from... Paul now the question is, has the try been scored because they're over the line? I get very grounded to see it. I was 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 grounded to see it. By the inside centre, Vian van Niekerk. That has resulted in Andre Boysen scoring the second try for the home side. Brilliant work by van Niekerk. Poor defensive effort by Paul Russ. He shrugged off numerous willing defenders. And then once it went to ground, it was the pop-up by Berger to a worthy recipient in the form of Andre Boysen, who squirmed his way over and got the ball down over the whitewash as Chimis hit the front and very really unfortunate it looks like Joshua from Mielin's afternoon has come to an abrupt end you're tight there I can't feel 30 seconds seven points in it Theo Bosov to look to stretch that lead by an additional two points. Well, it's another neat kick from Bosov. So the kickers are on song today, as are the try scorers. Three tries in the match so far, and uh, just under seven minutes left of this first half. Well, he came back on the cutback line. Put a fence by Jesse Johnson initially, and then the strength of Fanny Kirk. Bouncing through numerous defenders. Quick ball for Berger. Popped it up to Boyson. And the loose head prop did the business for the home side. Well, in that process of tackling there, it was Joshua Vermeer and the fullback for uh, Paul Roos, who got injured. So looks like he might well have left the field at this point in time. But, uh, we'll wait to pick up on that news again. It's Paul Ruiz in a favorable position, giving away easy possession. So it'll be a long kick here for Theo Bosov. And this time it's the inside center, Lal Hendricks. But it hasn't found touch from Bosov. Attacking opportunity here for Paul Ruiz. Now an up and under from Jesse Johnson, the lock forward. Ball knocked forward, so it's an advantage here to Paul Jim. Back four. Well, Gavin, that gives the coach grey hairs when you see a lock forward putting an up and under up. 
in the form of Johnson, completely the wrong option. Rather take it into contact, set up the breakdown, and then try work a mismatch where you have backs running against tight forwards. Instead, he put ball to boot. I think there'll be one man who'll be smiling in the country. That's Frick de Prea, if he's watching. Sit, steady, steady. Yeah, we've seen a, a couple of up, up and unders. We've seen a couple of drop attempts by loose forwards too. Sometimes they work, most times they don't. It's a lovely kick there, just into space there from Paul Gymnasium. Oh, a comeback for the scrum. It was a knock-on, so it'll be a put-in for Paul Ruiz. We haven't had a lot of scrums today, so certainly this will be a real test for the visitors because Paul Jim have a very, very potent pack of forwards. Paul Ruiz need a quick heel here. They need to exploit that blind side, try free up. A one-on-one -on -one with Moses up against Muller Duplessis. I think part of the challenge for Paul Ruiz too is that they've lost Josh for Nealin. Aiden Topley's come on, but they've also Boy. reshuffled their back line a little bit. So at the moment, Delinda Villiers is running at fullback. Yes. And this doesn't help matters at all, especially for a player of Josh for Nealin's quality. Coupled with the fact that they are getting bullied in the set phases. Yeah, Josh from Yellen. He's holding his elbow. And that's not a good sight to see in the SA schools fullback as he makes his way into the changing area here at Pochum. Crouch. Boind. Sit. Steady. So Tion could see her now. He's got a little bit of a blind side to work. He's got David Lee Moses there. His confirmation of the change, and uh, we wish Josh Vermeulen well. Let's hope he it's been recovers touched, been soon. Touched. Good bounce here for Vian van Sale. Looks really quite desperate to run from the back, Vian van Sale, because he knows he's got that speed to Malo Dupnesi, who also played Western Province Sevens. Dupnesi on the left wing. You can see the changes that have been made. Yeah, but also not even part of that mix. And this is Lyle Hendricks. Support coming there from Dylan de Villiers. You can see the breakdown is absolutely fast and furious. And once again, the pressure coming from the home team. And again, Gavin, it's an attacking breakdown that is ca causing to be Paul Ruiz's Achilles heel. The clean out is not efficient, and they're allowing the home side to get their hands on the ball and try to pull for it. At the breakdown, now oh. Vian van Sel, he's generally a right footer, he can kick with his left foot, but his last few kicks have left a lot to be desired, and he'll want a decent touch, and that's certainly not the distance he would be looking for. I want to pose the question to you, what could they have done better yeah, Paul Ruiz? Well, they need to double up from the inside, they need to be more effective with their clean outs, and the man who's not carrying the ball needs to get there quicker. Well, this is great ball to get. Just have a look at this. Theo Bosov with a charge downfield. And a lovely offload there. The ball going to Andre Boyce and the try scorer. This is Leave great running from Paul Gymnasium. And they've got a real opportunity here now. This is a big test, this, for the defense of Paul Ruiz. Well, that ball's been taken away and they'll come back for a scrum, a knock-on coming from Paul Gymnasium. One of the few mistakes that they've made in this first half. But now again, you see the dominance of the pack of forwards from Paul Jim. Firstly in the form, it was their number eight, Muller. Muller and then the lock-in, Ludic running around the corner. They're getting over the gain line. They're getting in behind the Paul Ruiz defensive unit. And unless Paul Ruiz rectify their tackling at half-time, they're going to be battered come the second 35 minutes. Although, want to go into the breakout, Paul Ruiz. They're deep inside their own half. Just kick it out. Take the half-time breather. Regather their troops and get some energy for the second half. 
Well, it's another strong scrum that, but it went down. And I'll tell you what, if it hadn't gone down, I think it would have been a massive retreat there from Polworth. And the visitors have to be very careful here that they don't give away a penalty, or even worse, still a yellow card. I think that's a hooter in the background. I think that hooter maybe needs a little bit of pumping. <laughs> Wasn't that loud? So this could be then the last scrum. So really, I think what Jim could see once from Paul was in quickly, out quickly, kick it out. But I think Paul Jim will have other intentions with this scrum. And they won the penalty as a result of that. It's another great scrum from them. Number one. Penalty against Martin Lowe, who doesn't seem that happy with the decision. They're going to kick for goal in the form of Theo Bossov. Again, it's scrum time. That's the loose head from Paul Russ. Martin Lowe, who is having a torrid time, is in on the angle, being penalised. Possibly the worst result that the visitors could have wished for just before the halftime break as it's handed Theo Bosov an opportunity to maintain that 100% record and extend this lead to 10 points going into the halftime break. His previous two kicks have been from almost exactly the same position. So <laughs> he's had a little bit of practice. So can it be three out of three? Two conversions. Here comes the penalty. He watches it closely. Oh, it's gone wide. So uh, Martin Lowe will feel a little bit more comfortable with that as he runs off at half time. Yes. So there the players are in the field just getting together. And lots to chat about at halftime when fancies for both of the coaches of the respective teams but it's been a humding over first half then two tries from paul gymnasium to the one of polaris halftime score 14-7 to paul gymnasium